Are you afraid to hold positions overnight? Most traders avoid it like the plague. But is it really as risky as you think? In this video, we will dive into the battle between day trading and holding positions overnight. Uncovering which one works and why most traders are making a big mistake. Now, why this matters? You see, most traders avoid holding positions overnight because they think it's too risky. And this is not out of nothing. Like all traders, including me, we wake up one day to see a huge gap against our positions that happened overnight. Even in markets that trade 24 hours a day, like futures and forex, you cannot watch the chart or watch the trade 24 hours. So even if it's trading 24 hours, you still can sleep, wake up to see a huge move against your position. So this uncertainty in the markets, usually the reason, the main reason why traders don't want to hold overnight. But here is the thing. Gaps move against you are random in the market. They're going to happen during the day and overnight and over the weekend. And not all markets behave the same way, which is a message that I've been broadcasting for the past four years. Every market have their own tendencies and behavior, and you should not lump all markets in the same way. So in order to find out if it's worth it or not to hold positions overnight or over the weekend, we need to test the markets separately. And the test that I will show you is extremely simple. You can do it on any market to find out if it's worth holding overnight over the weekend or not. The workflow involves three tests. We will buy the open and sell the close of the day session. So in my case, I live in North America, so I will use the New York Stock Exchange daytime. This is 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now for futures and forex, which trade 24 hours a day, it's up to you to decide what session you want to base your test on. Again, for me, I will test the forex and the futures on the same day session, which is 9.30 a.m., to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So the overnight session will be between 4 p.m. until the next morning at 9.30 a.m. And of course, the weekend will be the close of Friday and the open of Monday. So this is the first test I have here, the Canadian dollar in futures. So this represents CAD USD in Forex. And this is the first test. You see, we are buying the open, selling the close every day. So this means I am trading the day session. This is what intraday is. You are trading during the day session. And then I can switch my strategy to do the overnight. So this is the overnight option. And you can see now we are buying the close every day, selling the open next day. And so buying the close, selling the open, buying the close, selling the open. So this one will give us the results if we are holding overnight. And finally, we will do the weekend option. So this one will only buy the close of Friday and sell the open of Monday. So for example, this is November 22nd, and you will see that November 22nd is a Friday and we are buying the close and we sell the open. This is November 25th, which is a Monday. We sell the open. So we are holding over the weekend. Same thing here, same thing here, same thing here. Now to complete the test, we will do the long separately than the short. Now, obviously the net profit, the average trade should be exactly the opposite in long and short, but the return to drawdown will be different because the drawdown will be different. So the consecutive losers and winners will affect our drawdown and will give us a different result in return to drawdown ratio. And we will focus our test on that number. So for example, if I run the optimization on the Canadian dollar, so this is long and short, so two steps, and we have three steps for the day trading overnight and over the weekend. So all in all, we have six. And you will see that this is the short. The first three are short. Four, five, and six are long. And you see they are the, exactly the opposite in terms of net profit, in terms of average trade. But they are different in the maximum drawdown, 
which changes the number for the return to drawdown ratio. So I did the optimization on three Forex markets, three indexes and three stocks just to show you the differences in each one. So we will start with the Forex pairs. And again, I'm doing this with the futures derivative. So it should be correlated with CAD USD, JPY USD, Euro USD. And again, I am using the New York daytime session. That means I'm trading 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. for the day trading and then the rest for overnight. And of course, the weekend is Friday to Monday. And like I mentioned, the net profit is the opposite and the average trade is the opposite. But the maximum intraday drawdown and the return to drawdown will be different. So let's look at the Canadian dollar in the beginning. And we see that there is no clear edge on the short side. So over the weekend, we lose money. And overnight, our return to drawdown is 0.1. And the day trading is 0.5. So all in all, the short side, there is nothing to look at. But the long side, we have an edge over the weekend, which is we make more money than we lose. And also our win percent is a slightly little bit higher. This tells us that there is a slight edge in holding the long position of the CAD USD Forex pair. Remember, just like a casino, we only need a slight edge to make money. Now, this is a raw edge. That means we are buying every weekend. Now, of course, when you are building your strategies, you are not buying every weekend. You are going to have a filter. You are going to have a signal. So this just to keep in mind that you are, if, you're, if you are trading the Canadian dollar versus the USD dollar, in this case, we are doing it through the futures part, it is worth holding the long position over the weekend. Now we come to the Japanese yen. So the Japanese yen, there is a huge edge on holding a short position overnight. Look at this, 2.4. So we are making two and a half times as much money as we are losing. Plus now our win rate is 51.5. That's one and a half percent. That's also a huge edge. That means if we are trading a short position during the day, it's very much worth it to hold that position overnight because more likely we are going to make more money by holding that position. Now on the long side, you see there is no edge. So remember, this is for New York day session and this is for futures. If you are trading Forex, this will be the opposite because the futures is the Japanese yen versus the USD, while in Forex is usually USD versus JPY. So the edge will be flipped. And finally for Forex, we have a good edge in the short position overnight. So if we are trading the EC, which is the futures of the Euro USD, and if we are in a short position during the day, it's very much worth it to hold the position overnight. But in this case, we notice that the win percent is not in the same direction. That means, yes, we have an edge, but the win percent is not the same, which means that we need a really good filter to hold the position overnight. Now, the long side, there is no edge. I know this says 0.3, but 0.3 is really very low. So the first key takeaway out of this test is that not all Forex pair behave the same way. So not all of them worth holding overnight or over the weekend. And also on the same Forex pair, it's not the same behavior if you are long or if you are short. And this is what I want to drive to you, which is every market have their own behavior. Long, short, mean reversion, breakout, holding overnight, intraday, holding over the weekend or not. You only need to test to find out what is the market behavior. By the way, the data here I'm testing is since 2006 all the way to end of November 2024. So that is 18 years worth of daily data. So now we test the indexes and I will start with the S&P 500. 
So from all my videos on the channel, you already know that the S&P 500 has a huge edge on the long side. And you can see it very clearly here in the return to drawdown. Intraday is 2.5, overnight is 2.6. So we make more money by holding the index overnight. Over the weekend, not so much. There is no edge. So for the S&P 500 index, traded through the futures or traded through ETF, it's very much worth it to hold overnight because we have a huge edge on return to drawdown and also a huge win rate. It's 53.9, 3.9 above the middle line. Now for the NASDAQ, it's kind of the same, but not really. So you see, during the day, the edge is lower. I mean, we are still, we have an edge, but it's not like the S&P 500. But overnight, again, exactly the same thing. We have a huge edge to hold the Nasdaq index overnight. Also look at the win rate, 55.9. That's even better than the S&P 500. And finally, I'm going to show you the Russell 2000. And the Russell 2000, it's a big difference. First of all, we can make money shorting intraday. So this is new because look at these guys. There is no way to make money intraday. But the Russell, it looks a very good candidate to short intraday, but not overnight. Overnight, we have a huge edge, again, holding the Russell 2000 index with a big win percent. But also here for the first time, we have an edge to hold over the weekend. So over the weekend, we make 1.7 as much as we lose. And also our win rate is very high, 55.7. So the components of the Russell 2000 index is not the same, of course, of the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. Usually the Russell 2000 is small cap uh, stocks, and that's why the behavior is totally different. And as you can see, it is worth it to hold overnight and over the weekend. And the final test I will show you is some stocks from the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. So theoretically, they should show the same behavior of the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. We'll start with Apple. Short side, there is not money to be made, except this is new now because Apple is part of the S&P 500, part of NASDAQ. And now we find out that we can make money by holding a short position on Apple over the weekend. Now, don't mind the numbers. Uh, this is trading one share because uh, we're not interested in the average share. We're just interested in the return to drawdown and the win percent. So the short side over the weekend makes money, but the win rate is not as good. And then on the long side, intraday, Apple is an extremely good stock to trade. Look at this, 4.3, the return to drawdown ratio and slightly a 1% of above 50. Not so overnight. So Apple stock does not behave like the indexes. Then if we go to Tesla, there is no edge in the short side. And this is very interesting. Day trading is not good to go along on Tesla stock. But overnight, a huge edge. 3.7 with 53.5 win rate. And again, you see here, even though it's part of the same index, Tesla behave totally different than Apple. Apple is really good for trading intraday. Tesla is really good for holding overnight. Tesla is really good to hold over the weekend long side with a good, really good win percent. And finally, I will show you Netflix where there is no edge on the short side and a good edge holding a position overnight. So overnight is 2.2 return to drawdown ratio with 51.3 win percent. So even though the stocks are part of the same index, they behave differently. And even though indexes are correlated, the Russell behave totally different than the S&P 500. And even though the Forex pair all trading against the US, everyone gives a different profile. And that is the main takeaway which is to test your market that you are trading, find out its edge during the day, overnight, over the weekend, 
and employ that edge in your trading strategy. This edge can be a filter on your strategy. For example, if the edge is long overnight, that means whenever you have a long position in your instrument, you can hold it overnight because you have an extra edge with you. If it's not, then you close the position at the end of the day. To learn more about instruments behavior, watch this video and I will see you there.